Hi, Cal. How are you going? Hi, Jackie. Jackie um, is one of my colleagues at MindFlight 7. Um, so myself and Jackie will be taking you through today's webinar. Um, my name's Kelly. I'm a career coach and no doubt, like all of you, incredibly passionate about um, career coaching and, and supporting the kids in their um, careers journeys. Uh, Jackie comes from a teaching educational background and she's also um, been working with VR for some time as a, as a vice. So we're coming from careers and teaching with a, with a passion for VR and, and how we can help students see more and, and be more and fulfill their potential. So that's really the focus of today. All right, thanks, Kel. So my name's Kelly McGowan. I'm with MindFlight 7. And today's focus is around integrating virtual reality into pre-coaching programs for students um, with the, the belief that, you know, if you can't see it, you can't be it. And we're looking at how incorporating VR can really help inspire and engage students, not only around their subjects, but their career potential. Um, like most of you, I'm a passionate career coach and I've, you know, discovered the power of VR a couple of years ago. Um, and since then, I've been working with MindFlight 7 as well as I did eight Morrisby uh, profile sessions today. So I'm still a very active uh, careers practitioner. Um, today, I'm joined by my colleague, Jackie Stevens, who is an educator um, sure. and converts convert to VR and the power that it can bring to the classroom. And we're also joined by our CEO and Joel Parler, who is um, here today. You help us really in the background, Kajal, and you'll be joining in if and when you, you feel um, ready as well. So let's um, jump in today. It's pretty informal, please. We've got some key things to um, cover. Definitely want to show you some little clips around VR um, and how it's being used and how it can be used. Please use the chat. Please ask questions. Um, we, you know, we want to answer as many questions as, as, as you might have today. Um, now, before we um, jump in, I'm actually going to share a video with you that I actually um, love, and it gets me uh, a little bit emotional all the time. Now, I've just got to make sure I can jump into this video, make sure I've got the right one, because I've got so many... So MindFlight 7, we provide virtual reality experiences for high schools. And hopefully, hopefully that gave you a bit of a taste of the kind of things that we do in the classroom and what it's set up like. We'd love to hear from you in the chat. Um, how many of you have used VR before virtual reality, whether it's for gaming or, um, or in an educational sense, just to get an idea about the virtual reality expertise and experience in the room? Is this something people have used before? Feel free to also just unmute and share that way as well. Um, so Judy's raised her hand, Pride Mind Flight 7, no experience. Judy, have you used, um, feel free to unmute and share if you've used it, how you found it, how you didn't find it. Um, um, hi, Judy here. I, we used it at universities when they're doing, um, showing us how VR works. And so I put them on and moved around a room as if okay. there were things there that no one else could see, yeah? Mm, yep. Fantastic. Yeah, so there's a, there's quite a few people that have never used VR. It's really exciting. 
it's really exciting for people who haven't experienced before because uh, when we get into schools and we put the headsets on these people, we always get that immediate or well, the disbelief of what people are actually experiencing. So that's great. Yeah, and like myself, I have to say, I didn't use it until a couple of years ago and I was pretty sceptical, I have to say, until I put the headset on and did some of the experiences and then I thought, wow, this is an amazing way to engage students and to get them thinking about all sorts of interest skills and career paths and it, it, for me it was like, like a real eye-opener. Um, about the power of, of this because probably like most parents I spend my whole life, whole life telling my kids to get off technology so I was a bit hesitant to incorporate more but it is so you know in terms of education and careers you know if incorporated correctly it is a part of a program it's you know it's it's pretty amazing yeah it's so, incredibly powerful especially in the field of education which is what you'll hear uh, more about from me but I might just um do you want to go back through today's topics actually Kelly and then I'll talk a bit about what VR is sure. yep. yep so there's um obviously a heavy focus on uh VR in careers um so we're looking at just you know obviously Mind Flight 7 we deliver um, VR experiences to schools to high school students whether that's around subjects um, or career inspiration my expertise has been around the career inspiration part um, so we're just going to look at how we can use it to re-engage and engage students looking at how it can really expand the career possibilities they might think about for themselves and how to incorporate it into the programs careers programs also the power of VR in trades is pretty huge um, again I've just started to experience that myself with different groups and um, it's been pretty exciting uh, the fact that VR can also form like a micro work experience for kids, which um, particularly the last two years and increasingly uh, are less and less opportunities for students to do that in year nines and year nine and 10. Um, also VR in the Morrisby profile, or it could be any kind of careers profile that your school's using with the students and how that can be incorporated into VR. And of course, we'll have a discussion at the end and we'd love to get your thoughts, feelings, ideas, and so on as well. So I'm just going to hand over to Jackie, who's far more tech savvy than me um, to talk about what they are is. Oh, thanks, Kelly. Um, so yeah, it's really exciting actually that some of you haven't used VR. I think you remember the first time I, I tried it and just that, um, that immediate amazement and the power of what it actually creates, especially in the educational environment is, is incredible. So what, what it actually allows us to do is it allows us to create or recreate environments so instead of viewing like a traditional screen our students are immersed and they they interact in a three-dimensional world so one of our examples that I absolutely love it's a program that we created ourselves is open heart surgery and in this experience students can actually perform the surgery uh, in a replicated environment so a theatre using the apparatus themselves um, and by creating these simulated learning environments, uh, what we find is students work and learn by actually using and do the resources and doing it themselves. Um, like if you think back to some of the things that you loved most at school, I I'm thinking that generally they were immersive in nature. So, you know, kids love, they love the art and the PE and the music and your incursions and excursions are really exciting. And I, I think that's simply because it allows for more interaction of the senses. Um, and that's what VR does. It draws on your, your sight with, with what you see in a 360-degree space. It draws on the sounds, the speakers um, and the sensors and tracking is all um, built in. You've got, obviously, your hand devices, which allows you to um, manipulate, to move and to sense. Um, you, you might have vibrations or certain things that come through the controllers. And it's because of this that VR really is a growing field in both education and industry. So it's used in training and teaching and therapy and a whole range of industries that we will uh, touch on today. So there's lots of science. The science is all there now. Um, and, and it is the way in education. I um, mean, in short, because of what it does is it, it increases the neuroconnectors and the pathways in the, in the brain. So students are really learning more effectively. Um, Kelly, can you just uh, oh. click on to the next slide uh, and I'll talk about um, this one. So VR and student career inspiration. Yeah, so based on that enhanced cognitive performance, 
Um, VR really is the ultimate opportunity to inspire and motivate students. So our VR experiences, um, the career and subjects inspiration method is really powerful because it shows students through the direct physical and personal experience, the link between what they study and what they might end up doing for work. Um, you know, particularly in regional areas, we do go a lot into the regional communities and we find it just really provides them with opportunities to open their eyes to more possibilities than they what they, what they might have known uh, previously. So, you know, when we give students such a broad range of opportunities to explore, we're really helping them to see more and to be more and really to believe more in themselves and their career potential. Uh, Kelly, I'm just going to hand back over to you now to look at the next slide. Thanks, Jackie. Um, so I'm sure um, we, we work with obviously high schools regularly, both talking to teachers and uh, careers professionals. And obviously it, it's no shock that the, the lockdowns have really impacted the, the students in so many ways. Um, and we know that even just getting some kids to school and re-engaging them has been hard just like it's been hard for adults to go back, you know, to, to working full time and going back to the office and so on. There've been some real challenges of, of um, getting students to re-engage in school. And, you know, even when we look at the workforce and the impact potentially that, um, you know, this sort of great resignation and all this career uncertainty that children are exposed to, um, both through the media, but also potentially through their own home environment, it's even harder to get kids back to school and thinking about their careers when everyone around them seems to be thinking, what's work all about? Why am I doing this job, et cetera? So I think it's such, an, such a challenging time for um, students, both from an educational sense, but also getting them thinking about their future. And VR is a really um, you know, powerful way to re-engage them and meet them where they're at. So some students might just be VR could be used just from a well-being level just to get them, um, you know, relaxed or to find school fun again. You'll find some students aren't as affected, I guess, and are still really career-focused and engaged, but a lot of them aren't. Um, but those ones that are engaged, VR can be used in a more, um, I guess, sense to test careers out they're interested in and so on. So there's lots of different ways that VR can, can be used, but I think just re-engaging kids, it used to be obviously year nine was where we'd start to lose them. Now I think it's every year level we're struggling to re-engage and VR is a really nice tool to refocus kids and bring them back to why school matters and to get them thinking, yeah, there are really exciting things out there for them to do in their future. It's not all, all negative. We need to be exposing them to lots of positive things and building them up. And, and that's obviously my personal view. Um, really curious um, to know what people wanted to be when they were a, a student, when they were at school? You know, what did you want to be when you grew up and why and what influenced or who influenced you? I know for myself, I obviously never thought I'd be a career coach. Um, at high school, I actually had no idea what I wanted to do. And like probably half the population, I went to university and studied what my father and my eldest brother had studied. So I studied economics. Um, and we know that obviously there's a lot of um, kids that do study based on what their family does. Um, so and I, I love being a coach and I love hearing the kids though, their stories I'm sure you all do as well about what, what they want to do and why and that there is such a great weight that the parents hold in influencing the kids. Um, and that's terrific. But you also sometimes look at the kids' profiles and think you're completely, you know, there's probably so many other wonderful things you could do which might be more aligned, but they're limited in their sphere of influence because it really is very much around their family members um, and obviously parents play in a really positive role but a, a great role in kids uh, futures but the world is changing there's so many career paths out there some of the traditional career paths are dying off um, so it's quite interesting but I'd love to hear from people either in the chat or um, if they want to share what they wanted to be when they grew up and you know are they doing that now and who influenced them or what influenced them Kajal, I know you were influenced by someone in your family to follow an education path. 
Yes, yeah, Kelly. So I ended up taking chemical engineering, but there hasn't been a year when I didn't think that uh, probably that wasn't something that I want to do. Of course, I went through it. And then until I did my MBA, I sort of, I was struggling to understand what I really wanted to do. Uh, and the influence really came from peer pressure. Uh, and some of it was, um, yeah, um, from the family in terms of, okay, these are the options or uh, books you read. Uh, so there was no more informed way to make a decision at the time when I decided. Mm. Yeah. Actually, it's a good point, Jal. So I went to university simply because that's that's what you do, right? It, so many families will send their, encourage their, their children to go to university to get a university degree. And they end up spending all this money and this time on a degree that they um, doesn't really align with their strengths um, and maybe that they're not passionate about. So, you know, while we're saying that those skills don't uh, get used in some capacity, uh, wouldn't it be great in an ideal world if we could go in feeling passionate and motivated about what we're learning um, with some strong connections with our strengths? Yes. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I ended up studying a, a degree which I, you know, I suppose I used it to a certain extent, but it wasn't until I did this three-year degree and then I spent five years of travelling that I really decided what I was passionate about and what path I wanted to take. Fantastic. And we've got some interesting things in the chat. Someone, um, Carol wanted to be a flight attendant influenced by travel. Uh, Penny wanted to be a PE teacher influenced by a PE teacher at school. And that's another great influence, isn't it? Teachers with the kids want to follow. Um, someone, uh, Linda wanted to be a mechanic or anything that wasn't traditional to do. Her father was a welder and mum was a primary teacher. So it's amazing the things that influence, influence us. And they say your second career is the one that you really wanted. Your first career you do for others, namely probably your parents. And then often your second career is the one that um, you wanted to do. So Felicity wanted to be a radio journalist. She loved music and radio. Oh, you did work experience at Triple M. That's pretty cool that you got to oh, do wow. that. Oh, wow, great. Um, and you still want to work in community, community radio. So that's, I guess, fulfilling your career dreams a bit further down the track. Ashley was also pressured into a degree, like, like myself and Jackie, Ashley. Um, yeah, it didn't lead anywhere. Then took you to 30s to figure out what you wanted to do, yeah, which is yeah. a pretty common story, I think. Mm, yeah. um, so what we really are looking to do with VR is to bring some more of the reality about what careers involve early on in the process. Mm. Um, before kids sort of sign up for a three-year degree and hex fee and all go down a different path. So um, it's it's kind of amazing how it works. And in the past, obviously, as we mentioned, parents and family play a huge role. And, of course, they should. They're, you know, the, the kids are, should be influenced by them. Likewise, teachers and careers professionals. Um, books and TV used to play a great role. Work experience, although that's very rare these days and often if you do work experience you go to one location and see one job rather than a myriad of jobs and obviously the internet um, has played a role in the past but more recently social media has taken over pay tv youtube i'm, I'm not sure um, when you talk to young people you know primary school or high school how many want to be youtubers or gamers and things like that as a career option that's pretty huge um, but also youtube's used really uh, wonderfully for, um, I don't know, you know, with the Morrisby profile, they incorporate YouTube videos about people who do those roles and what's involved. So YouTube can actually be really educational from a career sense as well to get children to hear about what these things really are. But VR is, YouTube, I guess, watching things is very passive. VR is very active, that you're actually doing it. It's like you're really doing it. And I think mm -hmm. we need all of these influences and all these inspiration sources and VR is probably just one of the newer ones to add to the list of uh, inspiration sources for students. So we're not saying VR should replace any of it. It just complements it. And again, at that sort of different levels of the careers process, it can be a good component to incorporate, to bring to life some of what's been taught, reflected on and, and, and so on. And just to add into it, Kelly, it's really about picking a tool, not just uh, seeing a tool. So students do go in and pick a tool rather than reading or seeing. So that's the massive difference. Mm. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and following on with this slide, it's, it's that really that immersive nature that makes it so powerful because students, like we said, they're actually experiencing the workplace environment, the tasks that might be performed. 
Um, so I'll give an example, like workplace training, in some of those experiences, uh, students are following like the, the workplace safety procedures. So they're also given the direct consequences of what might happen if safety isn't adhered to. Uh, one of the examples is um, an oil spill in forklift. So, you know, observing the, the hazards that happen in the workplace. And it's through that immersion that presents that direct link between, you know, the studying and what they end up doing for work. Um, and the inspiration lasts because it is immersive, like, like the memories of all things that were immersive at school with your incursions and your, your excursions. Um, and, you know, when, when we're actually doing the tasks which link with that tactile learning style, which is very, very common, students remember what it felt like in their heads and their bodies because it feels real. Um, there's, you know, it presents opportunities to explore information and experiences safely in the private space. A great example is uh, chemical reactions. Um, so in the experience we'll have a, we have around chemical reactions, you simply wouldn't do it in the classroom because it, it's just not a safe procedure. It's not safe practice. Um, there's a lot of rules and regulations around that. Um, you know, it provides that abundance of resources that you just simply would not find in a standard classroom. A great example is our soundstage, which is our music composition studio. Uh, and you've just got thousands of dollars at your fingertips to explore. You don't even have to be experienced with uh, composition. You really can just tip away at it and just explore and, and improvise. Uh, Tilt Brush is another great one because it really, apart from having all the resources and more at your fingertips with, with snow and fire and uh, whatnot, it just it also eliminates some of the challenges that come with the, the classroom, for example, the storing of work. Um, and you can't make mistakes in VR. So you can sort of, um, you, the, it presents more sort of pressures. You, you go through more pressure, but it presents opportunities uh, to take more educated risks. So for example, with open heart surgery, you can't kill a patient. You know, you can explore and you can push boundaries and uh, that gives you the opportunity to challenge yourself and I guess go beyond your capabilities. Um, one of the other things I love about VR is it removes peer judgment. Uh, we know that, um, students can be very much influenced by uh, their peers. Um, so it gives them just a safe space to work in. And it presents a level playing field where experiences are just accessible to anyone from anywhere. Um, we do a, a remote fly-in, fly-out headset actually. It actually allows us to work with remote communities or um, students. So, and lastly, you'll see on that, that slide that there's no fear, you know, you, you're free to ex explore. Um, I'll just pass back to Kelly now. Thanks, okay. Kelly. Thanks, Jackie. Now, I'm going to have another go at sharing my screen to show a video and fingers crossed, I hope I get this right. Um, it's safe to say we don't have these challenges in VR, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's just, so I'm just going to show you some of this video and it's fascinating because it's a, a, game, a guy who's a scientist, technologist, he's a VR expert, and it's showing how this person's actually in their own virtual reality science research. They're standing in looking at their research. So it's pretty mind-blowing. I'll just play some of it. I can create virtual worlds that could never exist in reality, that no one has ever thought about that I'm the first one to really build and make visible and make accessible to people. At the University of California, San Diego, researchers use the most sophisticated 3D virtual reality technology to bring raw data, billions of numbers in a computer, to life. We can walk around in them, things can happen in them. They're a lot like a big computer game, only that you have a lot more freedom designing what you really want to do. I'm Jürgen Schulz. I'm a project scientist at the CalIT2 Center. That's the California Institute for Telecommunications and Information Technology at the University of California in San Diego. He's part computer scientist, part virtual reality researcher, and part video game designer. I develop software and research user interfaces and display technology for virtual environments. And this room is called the Star Cave, where Jürgen's clients get to literally stand inside their own research. Here we go, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Now we can see the, the surface of the protein. 
The Virtual Reality Center here at the University of California in San Diego is the leading virtual reality center in the world. All right. So I'm going to share my screen again. Um, and yeah, so I, I don't know what people thought, but I think it's kind of amazing, you know, when you think about STEM and getting kids excited about, um, you know, VR and, um, sorry, I just, I did got one thing right and then I got the next thing wrong. Um, yeah, so it shows that there's so much, um, just lost myself here, um, so much opportunity for VR to inspire kids, you know, whether they're looking at gaming or science or IT, it just makes it so much more interesting when you look at the things that they can do based on that video, right? That it's not, um, that STEM is pretty, pretty interesting. So VR comes into training, as you would have seen, sort of in, into the um, careers area in so many ways. There's obviously jobs in VR, creating VR games, whether that's just for pure gaming uh, pleasure or for training, education. You know, in the US in particular, it's used extens extensively, training doctors, nurses. It's used in manufacturing, used a lot in healthcare. Um, they're even using VR in um, healthcare pain management. So there's so many applications for creating VR content as well as using it for training. It's used extensively in the military. Like Jackie said, you know, if you're in the military and you're training, if you accidentally shoot the wrong person, it's okay. Uh, but, you know, it's not real. Um, it's used a lot in oh and and, and manufacturing. Um, and it's, it's just an amazing way to expose kids to what, careers really look and feel like rather than it just being a concept and quite abstract it becomes real and as we know the majority of people are very sensate they like objective information that's something they can taste touch hear smell you know that that's very human to to want that information and VR I think fills that that gap uh, when students are thinking about careers or not sure what careers to pursue, they can start to look at things they might be interested in. And that's also one of the benefits that we do as well is we kind of fast track those careers, right? Because we go in, it's not like once upon a time you went to a workplace and you experienced one career opportunity or the potential opportunities from that one workplace. We are now giving students the opportunity to try multiple careers in one space so it really gives them an opportunity to expand and just really explore uh, what's available. And, and it may be, you know, they experience something like open heart surgery. We're not saying that students then have to go on and, you know, profusionist. Uh, we look at the, the matrix of opportunities that are available within that one career. So students can see there are lots and lots of uh, possibilities. Yeah. And so, for an example, a student might not think about a career, but they might know that they're really interested in the environment. Mm -hmm. And that can be the starting point for them to say, well, we as the, um, the VR uh, event coordinators would say, okay, so you're interested in the environment. So here's some experiences, you know, the Iceland uh, uh, experience, the nature trek um, and tree planting, maybe ocean acidification visiting Raja Amhat and looking at their kind of recovery and regeneration project or cataclysmic earth. So the student might do all those experiences and come away thinking, uh, actually, when it comes to the environment, they more want to be hands-on working with within nature, working with plants and regeneration, or actually they do ocean acidification and they really actually see that they're more con concerned with marine biology and working underneath the ocean uh, with certain plant life or, or uh, fish that are struggling. So you can start with one interest and there's so many different places that that can go for the student and they can have all those VR experiences to help them start to refine what environment looks like for them and that is a career. Um, so it's pretty powerful when you see it in play. I'm just going to hand over to, sorry, that was my preemptive. I got the video working, but I got the slide for <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll take over this one, Kelly. So, yeah, I'll, I'll talk a bit about the VR that. room con technology. Sorry. You're right. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll talk a bit about the uh, content that we've got available. So, we've got 200 plus experiences, and generally, what we say to 
schools when we're working with them. If there's a particular field or interest that is not always immediately available, we can source it. Um, because what we do is we tailor our experiences. We obviously have a standard career format that we use, but sometimes schools want to explore specific fields. Um, so just as a quick summary of the VR content, we've got several types, they fall under the four categories. So we've got career inspiration. So that's content that is STEAM curriculum aligned um, and broadly relates to multiple different career directions. Uh, we've got workplace simulation. Um, so that's a wider number of work environments uh, that students can explore uh, that are related to specific career directions. And that also includes soft skills. I'll go into more detail in that shortly. Um, we've got subject specific information. So that's content that relates to certain subjects such as um, music, chemistry, physics, uh, sustainability and environment and philosophy has also been a really popular one for us. Um, we've got the fourth one is training scenarios. So that's content that is used to train and familiarise students with certain procedures and, and, and techniques. Um, so for example, that's your open heart surgery. We've also got one that's forklift driving. Um, Kelly, if you can just go to the next slide. Um, I'm going to talk, I'll, I'll give you some specific examples in those fields and also I'll give you, um, oh, yeah, I'll talk about some of the examples of where we've gone up to schools and the sort of things we've done around those uh, content types. So with career uh, inspiration, just to give you an idea, we worked for the school on the Mornington Peninsula recently and Kelly did a brilliant job with this one actually. The whole day, uh, six sessions were just based on tilt brush. Um, and it was all tailored around the opportunities and the, the, the plethora of um, opportunities available in the field of the arts. So they looked at, um, in, in Tilt Brush, there's uh, different environments you can experience that allows you to explore the different fields of the arts. So they looked at concepts of graphic design and architecture and uh, fine art and textiles and uh, 3D product design. Um, it was just an incredibly powerful opportunity, especially with the withdrawal of government funding and then the, the reinvestment of funding. So uh, there are certainly a huge field of opportunities available in the arts. Um, the next one, workplace simulation. So um, Kelly, maybe you want to talk about the, the trade session, the women in trade session that you did recently? Sure. Um, yeah, so we did a women in trade session at a... Um, my Ahead of myself, or no, I'll go back. Uh, I'll go, go back, and, sorry. Yeah. Just, That's just right. give me um, an example of. Um... Yeah, so we did a women in trade session and it was um, school kids um, and also uh, women who had who were looking to retrain. Um, and we start off with the forklift simulator. There's a myriad of experiences they can do and they're really kind of broken up into um you can break them up actually into different areas. This was just a general one to experience, but then I um, asked them to reflect on what they really enjoyed. So some of them really loved, you know, that sort of sensing, perceiving uh, student was able to drive the forklift and figure it all out. You know, they're really coordinated, very intuitive, and, and they loved it. Other people found it challenging in a, in, you know, a different way and more might have seen themselves doing trades that were more artisan-like, so maybe a carpenter might have been something that they were more interested in. Or yeah. some of them really liked the trades but more saw themselves working in compliance, safety or project management. So obviously trades is a very huge area and it's really important to help the students break down to the different types of trades that they would gravitate towards because, you know, they're very, very, very different. Um, so that was a really good way for the students to get an idea of what to focus on over the course of that program. And so yeah, and found might... it really uh, fascinating to be able to fall from the 84th floor. So that was the fall protection unit. Some of them did. And that I can was appreciate my... that's not for everyone though, Kajal, is it? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's why I like some of them really enjoyed doing that um, occupational health and safety yeah. um, training. Yeah. Okay, and also uh, we build on the soft skills to that as well. So we've got some fantastic experiences um, around things like one of them is how to answer almost any question, uh, interviewing techniques, active listening, understanding conflict. So really essential communication skills in the workplace that sometimes get go under the radar. 
Um, yep. So, yeah, just in terms of subject specific, just building on that, uh, we also do a lot of incursions around health sciences. Um, so recently we did one um, around uh, anatomy. So we were looking at, uh, we did heart, heart surgery and that we coupled that with frog dissection because the frog dissection is actually really powerful in terms of um, the comparative analysis of the human digestive system. Um, we've done experiences in tilt brush, looking at fine art techniques. Um, and we also, one of our more popular ones is through actually, um, there's philosophy. Uh, we've run a few sessions around that now. We've got a specialist in philosophy who runs those sessions. Um, and we also run a lot around digital economy and entrepreneurial skills. Obviously, Mindflight 7 is a fantastic example of that. And we also accept that not everyone knows what they want to do when they, they leave school. They may want to work for themselves. They may be incredibly creative uh, and just want to explore different opportunities. So um, there was one actually school in Germana we did this week recently. We focused on engineering designs uh, where students had to identify an engineering problem and then using digital technology, they had to design a solution to the problem where students then created their prototypes using uh, tilt brush. And some of the some of the designs they came up with were just absolutely phenomenal. So there certainly is a lot of potential uh, to explore those avenues. Um, and then the training scenarios, Kelly just mentioned this briefly, but Fort Bliss is a bit of a hit lately. Um, it, it's not just operating heavy machinery. So there's a lot of uh, information around workplace safety, identifying hazards, and the step-by-step -step procedures that go with operating uh, vehicles in order to complete tasks. Um, so Kelly, I'll pass it back on to you now. For yeah, the, uh, sure. Slide. And thanks, Jackie. And Kajal's answering your questions in the chat. So please keep putting your questions in and Kajal and um, Jackie and I will, will answer them, but Kajal's managing the chat. So I'm just gonna show you a short video again. Um, it will just be a moment. Um, Sacha, I'll answer those questions shortly. I'll explain a bit about how we run in incursions, the costs and the, the timeframes. So just bear with me on that one. to give people a um, idea of what kind of, a very brief idea of, of some of the um, experiences that we, we have. Um, so for um, careers programs, it's really, I think, worthwhile looking at breaking it down by year level. So for year seven and eight, um, you know, particularly year sevens, one of my sons is in year seven and, you know, they're very much like grade sixes, I think, at this stage, particularly with COVID and, and what have you. So for them, they're obviously not thinking about their careers, but it's a way of getting them excited about school subjects and it might prompt some career ideas. So we tend to run like quite a general um, careers experience for year seven and eight. Uh, when it comes to year nine and 10, we're obviously looking to, you know, things are starting to get a bit more serious. I also think year nine um, and 10, it's really important. It's when kids think, what am I here for? Am I just killing time? I can't see a future here, I've just got to go to school every day. What's the kind of goal here? And they might not know the goal, um, but it's that time then to start getting to think about their interest skills and, and what the goals, some career paths they might be curious about. Um, so we really try to incorporate in year nine and 10, the fact that that student is at a bit of a turning point in their um, schooling where they are starting to become more serious about their study and thinking a bit more about the future. We also know that, um, you know, we start to also draw upon where we can the Morrisby profile and a lot of our staff are trained in the Morrisby profile. So they can ask the kids certain questions like what skills they might, you know, what their strengths are, their aptitudes, personality traits, what were some of the careers they favourited uh, when they did the profile. 
maybe they've re watched some of the videos already and that way we can kind of guide them what experiences they might like to do. And as we alluded to as well, obviously year nine and 10 um, used to be when you got work experience. I know I never got work experience all those years ago. Uh, but if you are lucky enough to get work experience these days um, with all the legalities and insurance things and resources and whatnot, and the fact that you can actually go on to someone's um, business place, uh, you will, you'll get one. Um, so it's really important, I think, for us to expose kids to as many experiences as we can, because without that, they're very limited by a small sphere of influence, whereas VR enables them to explore the world effectively. They can explore experiences anywhere in any country. They can, you know, be go to the ISS space station and, and do what an astronaut does. They can be a marine biologist. You know, they can just do all these amazing, they can be an environmentalist in Raja Amhat. It's just amazing the things that they can do. So we really want to inspire and engage the kids in year nine, year nine and 10 to think beyond the obvious and traditional and to, to expose them to new things. And then year 11 and 12, again, some of them are already fixed in what they want to do. Um, so it might be just testing or retesting some of the career ideas they have for themselves. Or it might be like myself and others who just have no idea and had no idea even when they left school what they wanted to do, um, to re-engage and re-inspire them again about the subjects and trying to think about career paths and, you know, do virtual reality experiences to get them um, re-engage with with their futures so and again like Jackie mentioned we can customize and we customize some of the programs based on what the school wants um, sometimes they're very general and sometimes they're very specific if the school has a specific focus and objective for the program that they're looking at we also provide career resources for the students as well and we run debriefs with the students so it's not just you're in the VR the whole session we break the VR up with debriefing sessions and with the careers, we get them to capture um, some of their thoughts as well to then feed that back into discussions with their parents or their career counsellor at school or their teachers. So we see what we do as part of the process. It's just another part that um, builds upon all the work that's already being done by educators and career professionals with the students. Um, I'm going to hand over back to Jackie, who can talk about VR and STEM. Hi, guys. My name is Les. Um, I just wanted yeah. to some clarification about your mentoring or and volunteering. Um, do you encourage ex-offenders to mentor or to be part of your volunteering program? Um, I'm from Jobs Victoria, so I'm working with ex-offenders, and I just don't want to send them down the wrong path. Um, my number is 0409. I think we might be someone who should be on mute. <laughs> Thank you so um, much. Great. Bye. Uh, uh, if, if you're not speaking, could you please mute um, your um, yeah. yourself? That would be terrific. I think we've got some other things going on here. Liz, if you could uh, mute, and any, uh, uh, mute yourself and anyone else who, who isn't on mute unless you've got a specific question to ask about... Um, virtual reality and careers, that would be terrific. Um, Jackie, can I just hand, oh, sorry, my, now my PowerPoint's playing around. Can I hand back over okay. to you, Jackie, please? Yeah, yeah, great. So I'm just gonna to touch on just the importance of why STEAM is, is here uh, and why it's part of the education system. Just gonna clarify first, just in case people are unsure. So there's STEM and there's STEAM. So STEM is your science, technology, engineering and maths. And STEAM just integrates the A, which is the art. So at Mindfart 7, we cover all areas, which is why we come under the category of STEAM. Um, and fortunately, the government has invested lots of money in the STEAM development of programs and establishment of new working spaces in schools because we can see that the statistics are there. So you'll see there that 75% of the jobs, of jobs in the fastest growing industries will need STEM skills. Um, you'll also notice the statistics around the disparity of genders aspiring to STEM-related careers. So without these STEM skills, students will just simply be unemployable, hence why it's really essential that we are educating and we're providing as much immersion experience in these areas as possible. And that's where VR helps make STEM subjects interesting. Um, it increases students' uptake of them and ultimately increases the employment possibilities. So I'm just going to backtrack and just talk a bit about the process of um, the transformation of, of education and how we got to this point. 
um, namely that change has been, has been in curriculum. Um, and it's been based on the need to adapt an education system that creates uh, an inclusive learning environment and one that encourages students to participate, to collaborate, to problem solve and to innovate. And that's the result of STEAM. So the purpose of using the STEAM curriculum in education is to support the relevance and connections between subject pathways and the future occupations. So when we're delivering curriculum in this way, uh, then we're, we're adding the all-encompassing and we're adding, adding the all-encompassing nature of VR technology. We are really enabling students to directly experience the multitudes of career opportunities in one platform. So you can see just how powerful it is with all the possibilities. Um, it also enables us to educate and deliver content in a way that targets all learning styles. So if you're an educator, you'll understand a lot about this, that we obviously learn in many, many different ways. And sometimes, unfortunately, the education system can be a little bit limiting. So the classic example is the huge percentage of students who've got some form of specific learning challenge um, or need. Um, and speaking from a personal experience with my children, one of those areas being dyslexia, the 20% of students it will have some form of dyslexia. So if you're experienced in that in any way, you're also probably experienced with the same, don't worry, they'll catch up, which we know all too well that if you're a dyslexic learner, the process of decoding is going to take roughly five times longer to learn to read. So the longer it takes you to learn to read, the longer it's going to, going to take you to read to learn. So we really are limiting these students because the education system is putting so much emphasis on reading as the main source of learning. So VR for me is incredibly exciting because it is part of the solution because we're re-engaging kids and we're re-educating them as well. So the beauty of bringing the VR and STEAM together in schools is that we don't have to depend on the textbooks and the reading for hours on end because it allows us to create the rooms and the resources where students can work and learn by actually doing it themselves, as I mentioned earlier. Um, the example of that, again, open heart surgery is a classic example where the theatre and the apparatus, um, it's obviously a, a process where it's, the system's got easy sort of usability that it talks you through uh, the process of how to complete the, the complex tasks. And the benefits of creating these simulated learning environments and platforms is that they create more presence and more engagement, more retention from students, and that certainly leads to enhanced learning experiences. Um, okay. Just If you could just go to the next slide. Um, thanks, Carol. Oh, actually, I'll let, I'll let you take over here. That's okay, Kel. Okay. You do this one. All right. So we'll just, um, with micro work experience, we did mention um, particularly kids in remote areas and so on who might be limited by uh, work experience. You know, we run um, sessions in remote areas and or send headsets and deliver virtual remote experiences. So it's a terrific way to ensure all kids um, have the same opportunities, just like Jackie was referring to about education and how they learn. We also want to ensure that all children have the same career opportunities and are exposed to the same um, types of experiences to inspire them in their futures. Um, as mentioned, we, this is just a shot of the um, VR for Trade Career Paths Day and just the fact that, um, you know, everyone loved it. It was so immersive and it really got people thinking about what aspects of trades they would like to pursue and take forward. So for some the forklift driving wasn't their thing and for others it was. So that was pretty amazing. Um, we also just made mention of the Morrisby profile. Um, we also incorporate, you know, obviously different schools might use different tools, but we certainly try to support and work with the careers work that the school is doing with the students to incorporate that into any careers based sessions. Um, looking at, you know, again, incorporating what the students have already know about themselves and what's come out through the report and the discussions that they've had. Um, I had this amazing, uh, well, I always have, always, as I said, love hearing the students um, when you do the Morrisby with them, but this student said um, he wanted to be a plumber and he had a terrific all-round profile, like very clever kid, very great spatial mechanical skills. And he shared why he wanted to be a plumber um, because the this, this student could obviously do whatever he wanted to with his results. 
he said that he had an incident, I think it was a couple of years ago, where a commercial plumber took him underground and showed him what it looked like. And he was amazed. And ever since then, he's wanted to be a plumber. Um, there was no plumbers in his family. Just that chance experience and event inspired that child. And I think for VR, it gives children, although that's like a real life event, this is the next best thing to simulate and give students just these amazing experiences that they normally wouldn't have exposure to that might just ignite something in them. Um, and you know, I think that's pretty powerful. Um, I'm just gonna hand back to you, Jackie. Um, VR and student stories. <laughs> you putting me on the oh, yeah, spot. Sorry, this, so this was where, uh, I'll do one, and then I thought this was a fascinating one too. We did a rent a session at Viewbank, um, and it was STEM focused. And we had these these year eights come and said, "Can we join your session? We've just left this other session. It was boring. Can we join yours?" And they were just gorgeous. So they came in and they just loved it, and they didn't want to go. And then all these other kids were walking past the room and we had a whole queue of them wanting to come and join the session, but no one wanted to leave the session. So we couldn't bring the new kids in. And I thought, well, how many times do teachers have chances, have those experiences where you've got kids queuing up to join your class? And it just shows you how powerful it is and how excited the kids are to use VR. And even though the, the, the two year eights who joined us hadn't used it before, the kids are so intuitive, picked it up, and just loved it. They were doing all these amazing experiences. So I think, you know, there's just so, not, not enough of those opportunities, right, to get kids excited. Yeah, I might actually learning. just reflect on some of my experiences, actually, if that's all right. So one of the most powerful moments I had was an incursion we were running um, out at Camberwell, uh, that, that area. And one of the students was legally blind. So she was really unsure about how she was going. You have to ignore the noise. My children have just got home. Um, she was really unsure about, you could see she really lacked confidence as well, how she was going to manage the experience and what she was going to be capable of doing. Anyway, she was determined to give the open heart surgery a go because that's what her peers were doing. Um, she was able to make sense of the, the way that the program set up and designed. Um, there is certain symbols that show you where to manoeuvre and what you need to access. And obviously you've got the instructions are being spoken as well as them being uh, presented on the whiteboard in the theatre. And so she was actually able to do the surgery and complete all the tasks and locate the apparatus. And the sense of achievement and pride this student felt I know will never leave her as long as she lives or me. It was incredibly empowering just to be sitting next to her and just feel that, that excitement and achievement. And, you know, how many circumstances that we can say a legally blind student was able to perform open heart surgery. So, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's really exciting. And even I teach grade sixes and I bring devices into the classroom sometimes and, my class is the most exciting place to be at the moment. All the year sixes know what's going on in my classroom and they all want to be in there. It's the first question I get asked every morning is, Jackie, where can I go today? What can I do today? So, you know, there's students that haven't even tried this that are just excited about the idea because they can also see potential. So, yeah, it's awesome. It's powerful. Now, we're keen to hear, um, and, you know, what from the audience where people um, see the... Uh, fitting into careers or do people not see it or they unsure how it would work, et cetera, as career professionals? Maybe if we move on, Kelly, and if anyone's got yeah. any questions. Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, yeah, use? that's a great question, actually, Kevin. Yes, you can. Um, and look, what we actually do is we actually, one of the things that we do, I didn't want to confuse things today, but we actually set up a VR room, which has actually been one of the most um, popular uh, things that we've been doing of late. So uh, some of the schools we're finding have already invested in VR headsets, which is great. <laughs> great that schools are seeing this opportunity, but also not great in the sense that they're purchasing the wrong equipment. Uh, and they're realising the challenges that come with having, having your own headsets. There's a lot of management, um, technical and software management. So one of the things we do to alleviate that is we set everything up. We run it as a student leadership opportunity as well, where the students are trained 
to support other students and also staff. So we run a series of professional development sessions um, so that when the, the VR room is ready to go, everyone is well, well equipped uh, to get that on, on going and up and running. So we also are able to do remote um, management of the software. So if there's particular experiences that staff and students want uploaded, we can certainly do that with minimal fuss. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot of inclusions around that. So if you want some more information, I will, uh, I, I've got your contact details, I can reach out to you and, and give you more information around that. So great question. And just to add into it, uh, Jackie, um, the new product that we are um, implementing from the 27th of April, which is focused on um, astronomy and other science subjects uh, leading into other fields down the track, which is essentially a VR campus where multi-school students come together and they um, learn about a focused subject over a couple of weeks in a term or probably the whole term. Um, and you don't have to leave the school. So if you have got the devices already sitting in your school, then we would love to enroll you for that as well. So there are multiple options. We work with you just for one objective that we want to achieve your objective and your vision with your students. So mm -hmm. anything, please reach out and we'll try and help as much as we can. Yeah, that's actually a really great one, Kaja. I forgot to mention that. It, it's actually, obviously, VR is, and what we do as a company is fascinating. We just keep going next level. So this is one of the things we established recently. And as a teacher, to get in that space and just see the power of, you know, for example, we might all be standing around, we can teleport you into a specific kind of theatre. It might be um, outer space. Um, it might just be, you know, just a standard STEAM um, space. And just for an example, I can give everyone a life-size beating heart. Um, they can then obviously enlarge that. They can get their heads in it. They can look through our orders. And it just it becomes a discussion point. We can send it across the classroom. So the, the power of the collaboration um, and just all of the assets, we call them assets, these things that are available just take teaching and education to next level so this is our goal obviously we just want every educator to um, harness the power of this to be able to support students so yeah it's really exciting thanks for Gerald. thanks um i'm mindful of everyone's time that we've only got a few minutes left so please as i said feel free to ask questions or put them in the chat um if people are interested there's you can book a complimentary via careers demonstration at your school or if you aren't in Victoria we actually do like fly in fly out headsets where we send you the VR headset in a little pack and then we coordinate a virtual one of our team members will take you through the VR experiences via Zoom virtually so they'll instruct you so um, there's lots of ways if you are curious to learn more about it and, and demo it um, one of our team members can help you with that. Right. We've also, Kevin's just asked a question. So what would the cost of a VR room be? Um, so we actually have a um, fantastic opportunity. We've got some great partners happening in the US and they have given us the opportunity to sell um, a bulk buy of the Oculus Quest headsets at a lower rate. Um, so they are 1200 plus GST per headset. Um, and that 1200 gives you access. There, there's a lot of, sorry, my kids are fighting background. There's a lot of- Maybe you uh, could email extras. the information through Jackie. Yeah, yeah, that's a great Jackie, idea. Jackie, maybe you could email that information through to Kevin. And if anyone wants any pricing and that kind of information, feel free to, to let us know and we can send you the information for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, thank actually, everyone. Yeah, so, sorry, Kelly. So the VR room doesn't just uh, have hardware, but it's supported with multiple contents, uh, subscription, training, incursions, and the whole customized program throughout the year. So yeah, I would love to send you more information, Kevin, on that. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Um, before we wrap up, as I said, if anyone's got any last minute questions or observations or comments, please feel free to, to share those in the chat. Um, we want to thank you so much for your time, um, giving up your afternoon as, as busy people to come and join this, this webinar and discussion. And we hope you've taken away some ideas about how VR could be incorporated into your careers programs, or perhaps just if you're curious to learn more and, and trial out a headset, that's something we can arrange as well. I think with VR, unless you're doing it, it's very hard to understand. Um, you've got to be in it to experience it and then it all makes sense. So it's one of those 
things um, that's really important to you know get a headset on and have a play. Um, certainly, Penny, we're happy to send you any the information and you can have a look through that. And um, yeah, great. I'll, I'll reach out to everyone and um, yeah. yeah, send more information. Great. But, yeah, thank you again for your time yeah, everyone. Everyone this afternoon. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Ajar. Thanks, everyone. Much Thanks, appreciated. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye.